Well, what is the variable that is um, missing? Uh, um, so we want to pick the equation that's missing the final velocity. Well, if you look down that list now, it should be pretty easy to find the right equation. Clearly, this equation is missing the final velocity. So this is the equation we want. If it's missing the final velocity, it must have the other four variables that we're interested in. So this is maybe something you should make a note of in your systematic approach. How do you choose the right equation the quickest? Well, ask yourself which variable you don't care about, and then pick the equation that's missing that variable. All right, and now we need to plug in and solve. So let's start plugging in. What should we plug in for delta x? That was kind of a trick question. We don't know what delta x is. That's the whole point. So we should just keep that as a variable. That's still going to be delta x. What do we plug in for v initial x? Well, positive 8. All right, and here again, I'm going to say um, something that might seem a little unreasonable at the start, but I hope that you're just going to trust me. Don't just plug in 8. Plug in positive 8. One of the biggest sources of mistakes in physics is um, mistakes with the signs. And the way we're going to overcome that is to always write the correct sign. So don't plug in 8, plug in positive 8. Uh, and then our time is going to be 7 plus 1 half times the acceleration. Don't write down 4, write down positive 4. And then the time squared. So that would be 7 squared. So I strongly recommend that when you write down a number with a sign, you include the sign even when it's positive. I know that normally in mathematics, we don't usually include a positive sign in front of positive numbers, but it's a really useful technique in physics. So uh, please, please uh, try to give that strategy a shot, and over time, I think you'll see how it's helpful. Okay, and if, um, so something else that I recommend is putting all your signed numbers in parentheses. Again, th this might seem a little silly at the start, um, but I'm going to ask you to trust me. This can, again, make a big difference. Start by inserting your signed numbers in parentheses. That gives you a reminder that you have to include the sign for that. Uh, and I'm putting this in parentheses, too, just to show that it's multiplying. That's not a, a, as important. All right, so again, I really encourage you to try to copy the notation I'm using exactly if you're finding these problems give you difficult. So this is the exact notation I would recommend for this problem. Remember that we're not plugging in the units. Now actually, in some ways, maybe it would be better to plug in the units. Um, if, if your math skills are strong, maybe you should try solving the problem and include the units. Um, but if your math skills are weak, you're probably just going to confuse yourself if you try to plug the units in at the same time as you plug in the numbers. So in this series of videos, we're not going to plug in units. We're just going to plug in numbers. Remember, as long as all of the initial units were standard units, we're safe, at we're safe in just ignoring the units. And that's what we're going to do in these videos. Um, okay, so now um, let's work this out. So we have delta x equals 56. 1 half times 4 is 2, 7 squared is 49. 2 times 49 is 98. And we end up with delta x equals 154. 154. Now, this is not really acceptable notation for our final answer. Let me show you what we need to do here for our final answer. First of all, um, because this is displacement, we have to indicate the sign. Well, this came out to be positive, but again, we're not going to be satisfied with just saying it's positive. We have to put the positive sign in front of it. Please try to get into that habit with your final answer of indicating the sign. And also, with your final answer, you should show the units. Units really are crucial in physics. It's meaningless to say the displacement is 154. 154 what? Miles, kilometers, inches, we don't know. So in your final answer, even if you left the units out in the middle, you've got to put the units in here. And well, we know our standard units are meters. If all of your initial units are standard units, then you can be confident that your answer will also be in standard units.
If all of the units that you were given were standard units, then you can be confident that your final answer will also be in standard units. That's what made it okay for us to leave the units out as we went through the rest of the problem. So this would be a good final answer. The displacement is positive 154 meters. So please don't leave out the sign and don't leave out the units on your final answer. Okay, now we started with a, a very easy problem. Um, some, some of you might have thought this was kind of boringly easy, but don't worry, as we go along, we'll get into harder problems. The main point of this was to illustrate the systematic approach. Um, step one, draw the path. Here the path was really kind of boringly um, uh, boring, um, but notice that we're going to put dots in for the initial and final positions. Um, then step two, choose your axes and your positive direction. Uh, again, that was kind of boring. We might as well just choose an axis that's parallel to our path. We call that the x direction. Uh, and this arrow indicates that the positive direction was to the right. So we chose the positive direction to the right. As long as you're doing with one dimensional motion, the first two steps can kind of be kind of boring sometimes. And we are going to start with a bunch of problems about one dimensional motion. So for those, the first two steps are uh, a little bit uninteresting sometimes. Step three, break into components. Well, again, that's not really going to be relevant for one dimensional motion. If you're only moving in one dimension, um, then everything is already parallel to the axis. So while we're doing these one dimensional problems, we're not going to worry too much about the components. All right, now step four is where I think this method can be very helpful to you. So again, step four, start by writing down all of the kinematics variables. Here we only needed the x variables, but write down all five of them. Then underneath, in the appropriate places, write the numerical values that you were given, including the signs. And indicate the question by a question mark. That's what I meant by writing the givens and the question. This question mark is a really helpful problem solving tool. Now, when are we ready for step five? We're ready for step five when we have three numbers written down. Once you have three numbers, you can find an equation. And how do you pick the right equation? Well, ask yourself, of the five variables, what's the one variable you don't care about at all? and pick the equation that's missing that variable. Here we didn't care at all about the final velocity. So if you have in your notes um, next to each equation which variable it's missing, it's easy to pick out the right equation. We want the equation that's missing the final velocity. Well, that was this equation here. Then we plug in and solve. And I've tried to illustrate how I think you should plug in. Uh, anytime you're plugging in a signed number, plug it in in parentheses to remind yourself to indicate the sign. Now I'm serious about that. Um, when you're plugging in a signed number, put it in parentheses and indicate the sign. Um, I hope that you're going to trust me that this is actually going to um, save us from a lot of mistakes as we go through this material. Not just in kinematics, by the way, but also in mechanics and in the rest of physics as well. So a lot of the techniques that we're learning here are going to be very helpful in kinematics and also very useful when you go on to mechanics and um, the later portions of your physics course as well. Okay, and then we just carefully solved. And remember that your final answer, um, uh, if it's a signed number, should have a sign, and then go back to the units. Um, one thing I should mention um, is that in a lot of courses, it would now be necessary to round this off to the correct number of significant figures. So your instructor might want you to round this off to the correct number of significant figures. I'm not going to cover significant figures in these videos. In these videos, I'm not going to talk at all about significant figures, and I'm not going to round the answers off um, to the correct number of significant figures. Um, not because that's not uh, important, but just because I just want to focus on, I don't want to focus on that in these videos. Um, so in these videos, I'm not going to worry about significant figures. Um, so how am I going to round things off? If I have to round off, I'm just going to round off to what feels good. If I'm going to round a number off, I'm just going to round something off to something that kind of feels natural. Um, I'm not going to round things off to the correct number of significant figures. Uh, my goal here is just to give you a general systematic approach to kinematics and not to deal with the speci specific issue of significant figures. So that's something you'll have to work on separately if that's important to your instructor. Okay, um, what I'd like you to do now is go back and do this problem again. But now, try to go back and do it again using the same systematic approach. Remember, our goal here is not just to get the questions right, but to be using a systematic, consistent approach that we can rely on to avoid mistakes. So I'd like you to go back and just redo this problem again, and try to make sure that you're actually using the systematic notation. Keep doing the problem over and over until you're using all this systematic notation. What I have here on the board is precisely how I recommend you work through this problem. Try to, try to make your notes match what I have on the board as closely as possible. So as I, as I mentioned at the beginning, I'm going to be very dictatorial and bossy. 
um, in these videos because these videos are intended for people who are having difficulty with the material. Well, if you need some help with the material, um, it's important to use really good notation and to be very systematic. So let's try to be serious about that. Don't move on to the next problem until you can do this problem with the correct notation and systematic approach.